It's been a while since I did a vlog and I decided to do another one just to show you what my whole setup is like and also show you a couple of cute things I just got today. So I'm just going to give you a real quick tour of my whole setup here and how I'm capturing video and all that. So we're going to start from outside the room and I'll just come in and show you what I got. All right, so first off, I'm filming all of this in a little room in my basement, which I'm using as an office. So, of course, it's way too small, it's super cramped, and it is incredibly, incredibly cluttered. But who's surprised? I mean, a sign of an empty desk is a sign of an empty mind, right? So let's see where to start. Well, first off, here's my most recent acquisition. This is a Power Mac. I've wanted to do non-PC titles as well as PC titles because the Macintosh had an incredible number of utilities, all graphical, all designed under Apple's UI guidelines for the most part. I find that fascinating, and I'd really like to dig into them and find some of the rarer, more obscure stuff. A lot of PC titles ended up continuing on into modern incarnations, but I suspect a lot of the Mac stuff just kind of died on the vine, as it were. So this guy is working perfectly, just incredibly slow. It needs a new hard drive, it needs RAM, uh, and I need to upgrade the operating system and add a CPU upgrade. And for now, uh, I'm just testing it out, trying different software on it to make sure everything is kosher. So then we've got the PC. This is the Dell Optiplex that I showed off several videos back. This is what I've been doing all my recording on. So this is a Pentium 233. Uh, I've got a couple hard drives in there. I've got a really basic accelerator card that I haven't even installed the drivers for yet. Um, I've got a Sound Blaster Live right now, which will very soon be upgraded to this guy here, which a friend sent me very kindly. A Sound Blaster Live, uh, or sorry, a Sound Blaster 16 ISA. I think this is a Vibra. Yeah. But it actually has a Yamaha Opal chip on it, so it should have really good FM audio. And I've also got a Voodoo, the very first Voodoo, not the two or the three, so this is a pass-through card. But fortunately, I've got the cable for that and everything. All right, so then over here, uh, this is my Sony PVM. If you know anything about retro gaming, you know what this is. But if you don't, this is the best television ever made. Uh, as far as CRTs go, you can't do any better than this. It is a reference quality television. So this is a... Um, I think this is a 19-inch, I want to say, 18. And this is something you would have seen in a television station actually being used to monitor the signal being sent out because it is reference grade, right? So uh, flat. Uh, you know, it's got a Trinitron display on it, the best Sony had to offer. Um, it's got very, very clean input circuitry, lots and lots of inputs and outputs. So a really just a terrific piece of equipment. And what's nice about it is it takes direct RGB video, which means that for my older British machines in particular, which output that. The uh, Spectrum, I, I'm not sure if the Spectrum does RGB, but I, the Amstrad does, I believe. Uh, definitely the MSX does. And uh, those machines look so much better in RGB than they do on uh, composite video. Oh, and of course the, um, the Atari ST1040 also does RGB video. So that's pretty much mandatory. I, I can't really live without that. So I've got to have that CRT. Uh, so then next to that is the primary microphone I'm using. This is a Shure condenser mic, a KSM44, which a friend very generously donated to me. Uh, I've got that on a cheap-ass arm from the internet. And uh, there's no pop filter on right now because I actually bought this very nice shock mount that has a built-in pop filter. Really, really cool piece of gear. My existing pop filter sucked. I was having a really hard time getting it to stay where I put it. And so I got this thing because it holds the pop filter right in front of the mic. Well, guess what? The mic won't mount to it, so it's useless. I'm going to have to buy the godforsaken proprietary Shure one, I guess. But uh, either way, uh, I can tell you that for 20 bucks, this mic arm works really well. And if you're starting out, you don't need to spend 90 bucks on the, uh, oh, I don't remember who makes it, but the other one, the one that's got the big round disc here instead of that type of joint. You don't need to buy that thing to start out. This thing works just fine. And it worked with my Blue Yeti as well, which is what I used to use to record my live voice. And I, I don't know, I might go back to it. I think it might do better for the sort of angles that I'm working with here. But for now, I'm using this and it's working really well. So then for audio capture from that, I've got this XLR cable coming around the room to... Well, you can barely see it, but down here... There we are. I've got a Steinberg direct digital input box. And that guy is capturing the audio from the XLR and providing phantom power for this guy. And then uh, capture from the PC. So the way that works is uh, on the back of the PC, uh, I've got uh, video coming out here and uh, audio coming out there. And they take two very different paths. The video comes around to this powered video splitter. Uh, one cable from that goes out to the uh, CRT monitor here. And then the other one goes around to this box here, which is a HDMI to v or sorry, VGA to HDMI converter and scaler. Uh, and the reason for that is because from there, it goes across the floor 
to this, the X Capture. Now the X Capture natively does VGA, but I couldn't get it to play well with the signal coming out of the PC, and I'm not sure why. So for now, I'm just capturing as HDMI, and that's working really well. I'm hoping to switch to direct VGA capture because I should get a sharper, crisper, more accurate image, but for now, that's what I'm using. And the advantage of this setup is that if you want to do this sort of thing, you can just buy one of these gadgets online. I got this on Amazon. There's the brand name. It uh, looks like REI. Yeah, anyway, it's an REI XD600, and I think I spent maybe $30 on this. So this guy could encode the audio into the HDMI stream, which is very convenient if you just want a single cable running across your room. The problem is with OBS, it's hard to split that audio out and capture it. So instead, what's going on is that the audio cable from here runs all the way around the room into this guy here which is a USB sound card that's from Behringer. Uh, it's very basic. So this is the Behringer UCA202, and it's sort of like the most basic digital analog, analog digital converter type thing you can get. Uh, it has a pretty high noise floor, um, but I haven't been able to find the money to get anything else right now, so that's just what I'm stuck with. But that provides an extra audio input to the PC through USB, which means that with OBS, I can put that on a separate channel. So normally the camcorder that I'm holding lives on this tripod here, and I use it to capture my back of head view, if you will, and, you know, monologues. Uh, and I have, when this is running, a power cable coming from the AC adapter over there, da da da. And then uh, there's an HDMI cable here, which plugs into the camcorder and goes into this HDMI to S video converter, which actually works really, really well. Uh, if you're looking for that functionality, um, this guy here is flawless. Um, what even is the brand? Does it have a brand? No identifiable brand on this thing, but if you can find a box on eBay or whatever that looks exactly like this, uh, I recommend picking it up because the quality is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it puts out a great signal. Um, so what this does is it spits out both uh, composite, you know, yellow RCA and S-Video, and then that's running into the TV here. Now, one of the advantages of using this particular television is that it has right here a 16.9 squish mode. So if we were to just view this through the adapter normally, we get a stretched image, and that's no good. If I put it in 16.9 squish, then I actually get the right aspect ratio. And basically, this just provides a uh, program monitor. It lets me see what I'm looking at uh, as it would be displayed to you, because the LCD on the camera itself is not very accurate. So it's putting out a 15.5 kilohertz whine right now, which is really intolerable. But fortunately, I'm able to just not filter that out in post-processing, so it doesn't show up in any of my videos. A couple of the early ones had it when I hadn't really figured out how to do that yet. So I don't love using this as a program monitor. Like, it's super cool, but it's also huge. It's whiny. Um, I can't put it where I want it, and it's taking up a lot of space on my desk. So uh, once I have an opportunity to get an LCD monitor to use instead, I'm going to displace this and, and put it somewhere else. I still need it in order to demo all the old consoles and the stuff that runs at composite, but for now, I just don't have the room for it. Very soon, I'm probably going to be moving all this stuff into another room because, unfortunately, I just had to give away my lizard, uh, which was taking up the other room. Uh, I'll probably put a picture up on the screen of what she looked like. Uh, she was a gigantic four and a half foot long monitor lizard. She weighed about 24 pounds, and I realized I was keeping a zoo animal and just could not hang on to her. So I gave her to the local reptile zoo where I think she'll have a much happier life. And now, hopefully, I'll be able to take all of this stuff here and move it over into the other room, which is storage right now. And then I'll be able to expand my bench out here move the television down, and have a lot more room to work. Uh, and then I can put a, a preview monitor on the wall or something like that, or maybe put another arm up to hold that. And that'll be my program monitor instead. So I don't recommend using the CRT approach, um, but you know, for what I'm doing, it was just the easiest, most convenient way to do it. Okay, then, so as far as doing the actual live video, I needed lighting. So the way that works is I bought a kit off of Amazon. Um, it's two of these. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so this is a softbox with a 105 watt fluorescent tube in it. Uh, so that's one of these bulbs here, and that's 105 real watts, not 105 equivalent. Give you a sense of scale, this is a big, big bulb, and I have huge hands. So this bulb is incredibly bright, it's unpleasant to stare at directly, and the reason I have this one in a chicken lamp is because I couldn't actually get the other softbox in here. I had no room for it, so that's just what I had to work with. So this is my light that shines this way. That's my light that shines this way, and I usually sit right here in the middle, so I get lit from either side, and then this LED shop light provides light from the top, so I've got even illumination for everything. 
So then for doing voiceovers, I still use the Blue Yeti because it's convenient to use on my desk here and plugs in via USB. And then uh, that's about it for production equipment. That's, that's pretty much how the setup works. Uh, I'm filming everything in this absolutely, completely tiny area. Um, it's just squished into the corner here because it's all I've got. Uh, I've bought this backdrop online. It's not a very good backdrop, but it's better than you staring into all of this. I figured it would be a little less visually noisy, so you don't have to stare at my storage closet where I put everything I don't know how, where else to put. And then while I'm here, I just want to show you some gems I picked up today, which I'm really looking forward to going through. I went to the uh, Salvation Army, and I found a whole bunch of CDs there. So uh, I've got someone, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, sales leads from 2003. That's probably boring, but it might be fun. Got Trains, Railroad Simulator, Bugdom. This is a... Freddy Fish and Luther game, uh, Rally Championship, uh, I've never heard of this, I'm guessing it's some really bad 3D race game, I'm looking forward to that being terrible. Um, this is a Cygnosis airplane game, which I'd never heard of, called Combat Air Patrol. I, you know, it's itching at the back of my head, maybe this was something that was well known, but I don't remember it. Uh, Cluster Ball, the future sports experience, I expect this to be absolute garbage. Uh, clue finders uh, this is obviously for uh, 12 year olds and you know I already want to do children's software but in particular I'm interested in the fact that it says kid picks on it I don't know whether that means it includes kid picks or it's like a kid pick software series I, I don't know but I'm hoping that's got a, a really weird version of kid picks on it that has even more sound effects than the past ones uh, and then a uh, Pac-Man Adventures in Time which is apparently some sort of 3d Pac-Man again I've never heard of this but whatever and then finally, we've got archives. I've got floppy disks and floppy disks. Pretty much this entire blue tub is full of floppy disks. So that's several hundred to go through. These are all software cassettes for the uh, Amstrad CPC and the ZX Spectrum. So these are all uh, old 80s or like uh, software magazine cassettes or, or even just commercial software. You can see these are a lot of magazine pack-ins with just random games on them, the equivalent of, uh, you know, shareware disks. More floppies, more floppies, blank floppies, in fact. And then just scattered around the room are random pieces of ephemera and stuff from archaeological digs that I found at the RePC or the thrift store or ordered online and haven't gotten around to yet. Anyway, that's it. I uh, just wanted to give you a tour of my incredibly messy studio here. Uh, it's taken a lot of work to set this up, and uh, it's going to take a lot more work to get it into any sort of really usable configuration. Uh, this Mac takes up way too much space on my desk. Uh, the PC takes up way too much space on my desk. Uh, the CRT, the Sony PVM, takes up too much space on my desk. Uh, there's so much stuff in here, and I just don't have a place to put it all, but I need it all. I mean, this sort of hobby is a hoarder's hobby you have to just keep getting things and eventually you'll do something with them and you just have to hang on to them in the meantime so it's pretty terrifying to your significant other but it's what i have to do in order to do this thing and it seems to be paying off so i'm having a good time i hope you're having a good time and i hope you have a good day